All right, guys, well, welcome back to video four of our in-depth discussion of the five C's. And today's topic is about cordage. Gonna be fairly short and sweet. There's not really a whole lot without going into details of showing you different types of cordage and how to make natural cordage, which is really why you should have it in your pack already, because it is not an easy thing to do for most people. You have to be able to source the right type of material, and you also have to understand quite a bit about primitive skills to actually manufacture cordage in any great amounts in a natural environment. I'm not saying that it can't be done, I'm just saying it's very difficult. If it's something that I bring into the woods with me, like in my pack here, I keep everything inside this small bag and I've got several types of cordage in here and I'll get these out and change the camera angle here in just a second and let you see that a little bit further. If you haven't watched this series from Monday, which would be three videos ago, dealing with cutting tools, please go back and do that. They're all up on the YouTube channel and you can just find those and watch this kind of from the beginning. So let me move the camera. I'll come in a little bit tighter and actually show you what's in the bag that I have here. So let me do that now. All right guys, so what I have here is just a basic nylon bag. I try to color code everything that I keep in my pack. So if I need to quickly go in and find a medical bag, that's a certain color. If I need to go in and find a fire lighting bag, that's a certain color as well. And then my camp cook bag is also a certain color. Um, that way it's very easily identified and two, if I were to drop this, since it's kind of a bright orange down on the ground, hopefully I can go back and find it and recover the items that I've lost. Another thing that you could do with these, this kind of ties the five C's back and forth, you can also get uh, waterproof bags about this size from many of the different stores in the local area. And you can then make this also a impromptu water catchment or container. This one's not that style, but if you had that style and they come this size, well, great. Now I've got something that does more than one thing, which is something that you should definitely consider as part of your pack. All right, cordage. I'm not gonna get too far out in the weeds in this. The thing that I will tell you, have multiple kinds. Have this in your pack because cordage to manufacture in the wild is not an easy thing to do. You have to have a good understanding of how to um, select certain materials that are good for cordage making and also know how to then do a reverse ply twist with some good primitive knowledge to make cordage. All right, this is bank line. You can get it in many different styles. You can get tarred and untarred style bank lines. This is an untarred style bank line, but I've got something that I can use for making of a wide variety of different things. I can utilize this for net making, for fishing, for setting up fishing style traps, for making trap building, for shelter building. There's just a wide variety of things that I can utilize with a good roll of bank line. The other style of cordage that I keep in here, it's a little bit thinner. Line this back up a little bit. This is a thinner gauge material. And again, I can utilize this for trap making, uh, for building of different things. Uh, it, it's, it's truly a multi-source thing. This could also be a, a much lighter weight net material. There's all kinds of things as far as crafting projects that you can then do out in the wilderness settings. This is just some thin brown twine or string, I guess maybe is a better word for it. It's about 110 yards. And this I have in the pack for repairing of clothing. I have used it for uh, arrow feather fletching before when I've made a couple atlatls. Uh, works great for that. So this again is a godsend out in a wild environment because this would be extremely hard to fashion in the wild. This one should be familiar to you all. A little hank of 550 cord in here. This comes in all kinds of colors. It's very durable, good strong cordage. And the other great reason for that, and this is just a ACU color. You notice here on the interior strands, you've got seven individual smaller hanks of rope. So if I've got 10 feet of this, I've got seven strands of that. And all of a sudden I've got 70 feet 
of what could be fishing line or net making material and still have the exterior cord case to do other crafting projects with. And then I can further, if you see that this cord is just a reverse ply twisted cord, I can actually break this down even further if I wanted to, to get an even thinner fishing line out of that. Don't overlook 550 cord in your backpack. It's a great, great resource to have. And here's what most people do with them. I've talked about this before. They call and make the, uh, the cool survival wristband thing. This is one that I've made with jute twine core in the middle, so I've got some fire lighting ability. Put a uh, fancy piece on the front here with my two feathers logo. And then as the buckle, I've got a striker rod, which is a firesinium fire striker rod. So I've got a band that not only does some cordage for me, but also will assist in lighting a fire. So make sure that as you're thinking about the five C's, tie them back and forth. Make sure that they're able to play with one another and that they can help one another out with items that you bring in your pack. This is just an example here, natural twine. This is jute. And as I've said already, this is a great fire tinder. If I needed to get a fire started, I've got some natural tinder. This catches a spark very well and will burn for a fair amount of time so you can catch other marginally um, tinders or fuel sources on fire and start your fire lay and build your fire triangle from there. Uh, tuck that in there. Something that most people overlook when they think about cordage things like this and I posted this up a couple Christmases ago found these for like 25 cents 50 cents at a local craft store this is a heavy gauge copper wire which can then be used for multiple purposes I can manufacture traps from this I can use it for shelter building or pack building whatever I need to to craft in a wilderness setting so don't forget about things like this or even wiring harnesses from a vehicle that might be disabled or whatever that is, ATV, snowmobile, whatever conveyance brought you into the woods. Think about cannibalizing out the massive amounts of wire that are probably already in that item. I left the other ones in there, but this is along the same idea. I keep about three snare traps in the bottom of that bag. So I have a snare trap already set to go which again will help me out in a natural setting if I'm now in an emergency mode where I need to craft traps quickly. This gets me set up very quickly and with the heavy gauge wire here at the end of this, uh, it's gonna go around the foot or the neck of the animal and they're not gonna be able to chew their way out of that easily. So a very good thing to have. I don't wanna get too far into the weeds on cordage. As I've said, cordage is very difficult to manufacture in the wild. If I have that already with me and I've put that in my pack and planned ahead, well then I'm way ahead of the game because just from this small resource that I have here in front of me, there's many, many different types of crafting projects that I can use with this cordage that I've already brought in with me. If I know how to make natural sourced cordage or, or confine that, great. I want to utilize that as well because I want to save this cordage that I have here is a great precious commodity. All right, gang, well, that's all I really wanted to talk about cordage today was just to get you thinking again. Again, just because we say the five C's, think outside of that a little bit and say, okay, well, I need to have multiples of each of those five C's. That way I can optimize what I have in my pack a bit more. And again, this is gonna be something that you're gonna need to weigh out based on space of your pack and the size of your pack. The pack that I'm currently using is only about a 23 liter pack, so you do have to kind of plan accordingly to make sure that I have room in that pack for the items that I have chosen to bring into the wilderness settings with me. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at covering. That'll be the fifth installment of this week's version of the five C's, and covering is a multifaceted topic, so that's another reason why I wanted to save it for the end. And many of these things that we've already looked at, be it cutting tools or cordage, obviously fire, all of those things are going to play into covering. So that'll be tomorrow night's video. If you were on the Facebook page, you noticed as well, last night I found a standing grove of uh, cane 
Uh, it's a, a switch cane, river cane. It's all part of the same cane style family. Uh, we'll be having a video up shortly about that. And I'm gonna set some of that cane aside for some arrow making, uh, which will be many months from now because I do need to let that season. So thanks again for joining me for this quick discussion on cordage. It's one of the five C's, which we have been talking about throughout the week. So until tomorrow, guys, have a great night, and I'll see you then. As always, keep your knife sharp. Keep the go bag close. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.